Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 91 to 95. So first, I'll show you guys the questions so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 91, 92, 93, 94, and 95. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 91, it says a common use for glucocorticoids is as an immunosuppressant. From this, we can reason that they would be most useful for treating which of treatment of which of the following. So the key thing is we have something which can act as an immunosuppressant. So that means that it suppresses the immune system. So for this, we wanted to we want to use this to treat something in which the immune system is overactive so that we can suppress it and get it back to normal levels. In option A, it says food poisoning. So for food poisoning, you would actually have, you would want the immune system to be more active. You wouldn't want to suppress it. So food poisoning means that some pathogen from your food got into your system and is affecting you. It could be a bacteria or a virus. In this case, you want an immune response. So you want the immune system to be active and to respond to this. So that's how you would heal. You don't want to suppress the immune system that would make your symptoms even worse. So A would be incorrect. B is a similar thing. You got infected by a virus. The virus is already compromising your immune system. You don't want to suppress it even more. C, hyperthyroidism. This is more so related to metabolism. So the, the hormone secreted by the thyroid, thyroid hormone is going to be more so related to metabolism, not so much the immune system. So it's not really as relevant as option D, D is seeing allergies. And what happens when you have allergies when you're allergic to something is that it causes an unnecessarily overactive immune response from your body. For example, like pollen, this can cause an immune response. Your body thinks that something is attacking it and it launches this response to protect itself, but really pollen is not going to harm you. So allergies are a result of an overactive immune system. So we want to suppress it. So therefore we can use this immunosuppressant. This would be a good use. So D is the correct answer. In question 92, it says the primary function of sterocelia is for what? Sterocelia, these are in the hair cells, which are located in the inner ear. And so what these are useful for is detecting fluid movement. And then your inner ear can use this, the organs of your inner ear can use this for hearing as well as proprioception. So B is our correct answer. A is saying smell. No, that's not correct. That would be the sensory neurons in the nose serocelia these are in the inner ear so if you believe that these were in the nose then you would choose a which is related to smell but in this case you know a is incorrect b is correct proprioception is correct this is a sense of your body this can be acceleration for example and it can also be balance so that's what that's why serocelia is correct it is something or proprioception is correct because it is something that stereocilia cilia are actually used for. C is incorrect. The taste buds would be involved in detecting taste, not something that's in the ear. And D, same thing, aspiration or breathing, that would be something in the mouth or nose, not the ear. In question 93, it says F factor plasmids are transferred through what? So essentially we're talking about plasmids being transferred and these F factor or fertility um, plasmids are transferred directly between bacteria. So what's a way of transferring genes directly between bacteria? A, option A is transformation. This is incorrect because transformation is when you take something from the environment. So this is from the environment. That's why it's incorrect. But B is correct. This one is one bacteria linking with another bacteria and transferring genes, usually in the form of plasmids. Transduction, that one is incorrect because this one is when a virus goes and transfers genetic material to a bacteria. So transduction is also incorrect. And then transposition is also incorrect. This is movement of a gene within a chromosome. So say you have a chromosome, if there is a transposable element, this genetic material can move 
throughout the chromosome. It can move from one location in the chromosome to another location, but that's really just talking about genetic material moving within one chromosome, not from one organism to another. And we're talking about transferring something from one bacteria to another, one bacterium to another. Therefore, B is the correct answer. Conjugation is that process. In question 94, it says peroxisomes are membrane-bound organelles with high concentrations of catalase and urate oxidase. In a mutated cell lacking catalase, what is the most likely result? From the name peroxisome, you should know that these guys are responsible for breaking down, so breaking down peroxides, peroxides. So they break down peroxides, and a peroxide is generally something which has this formula. Two oxygens connected together by a single bond, and then there are some groups on the other side. For example, hydrogen peroxide is a pretty common byproduct of some reactions in a cell. If a peroxide is formed, this oxygen-oxygen bond can be broken, and each of these oxygens can take back an electron and therefore they have a radical. So the breakdown of peroxides leads to radicals. Radicals are very reactive. They'll react with other things in the cells. This can be very disastrous, especially if they start reacting with parts of your genome. That leads to mutation of your genetic material, which can lead to some very dangerous results. So these things are dangerous. Peroxides just having them in the cell. So they are a necessary byproduct of some reactions, but you need to get rid of them quickly. And that's what peroxisomes do. So they use catalase, and we're told that this, uh, this cell has a mutation, and it does not have catalase. So if you don't have catalase, something which breaks down peroxides, what is the result? A is saying the inability to break down glycogen. No, it's not glycogen that we're talking about. It's not uric acid in option B either. It's not fatty acids either. You should know that peroxisomes and catalase, those are used to break down peroxides. In question 95, it says the entero ligament is used as a rotational stabilizer in the knee. As a ligament, it connects what? So what does a ligament connect versus a tendon, for example? So you should know that ligaments and tendons, and then there's also another one, fascia. F these three connect different things in the body. Ligaments are used for connecting bones to bones. Tendons are bones to muscle. And fasciae, these are muscle to muscle. And so A is our correct answer. Ligament connects bone to bone. The other ones are incorrect. Make sure you know these different types of connections in the body. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below, and it's also written right here. And in that course, we go through a lot more questions just like this and explain the question as well as going through all the different answer options and explaining why each one is correct or incorrect. That's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.